Hey there guys, I are Clever here and I am very excited because the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 full release is coming soon. But I'm sitting on a whole load of beta footage that I'm just itching to use. But instead of showing you guys like another gameplay video, I thought I'd do something a bit different. Go into the maps a little bit more, analyse the maps, do a little bit of a map breakdown. And by that I mean... We'll have a look at any clash points, like for example at the start of a game, that particular point is where people are going to clash, or if there's going to be any campers. I mean, Call of Duty nowadays is actually pretty good at getting rid of those camping spots, but there are a few areas that you should probably still be aware of. Next we'll be looking at danger zones, and I mean the whole, the whole game is a danger zone, but there are specific areas that... If you're in that place, get out quick because the chances are you're not going to last long. You're not going to get those kill streaks because you're going to die. Next, we're going to look at any sneaky routes you can take, anything that people don't really think about, and you can use that to your advantage to get one up on them. Can you counterattack them? Can you get behind them? Can you crush their defense? Finally, we'll be looking at any reoccurring situations. And by this, I mean. Every single game that's played, or most games that are played, this situation occurs and occurs and occurs. I'll get into that more when we reach that point in the video, but for now I want to talk generically about all four of the maps. In the beta we were given four maps, that was Combine, Evac and Hunted, and then later on they released Stronghold for us as well. Now unlike Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, which had three, four, five story buildings, every single map in Black Ops 3 has a maximum of two stories, which I think it makes the game a lot more tactical and a lot more fair. You can usually see which direction your enemy is. There's also wall running, like Matrix style running across the walls, shooting people down as you go, which is incredibly awesome and does have its advantages. However, it does have its disadvantages as well. So you can push really nice and fast. You can flank around someone and take them out from behind. But while you're running across that wall, you are quite an easy target, unfortunately. And I have taken out a lot of people that were trying to do that fast push and I'm just sat there gunning them down. So we've looked at quite a lot of combine footage already, so let's start with that map. So this is what the map looks like, and if you take away all of the distractions, all of the other stuff, this is what it pretty much boils down to. We've got the light grey of rooms that you can go in, and the dark grey of rooms that you can't go in. There's also the red and yellow stripes, and they're danger zones, that's where you can fall into a pit basically. We've got the demolition zones here and the domination zones here. Now, probably already you can see how the combat's going to evolve around the, around the game. There's also this faded striped area that I've added in, and that's uh, not a dangerous drop, but it's an area where it is quite dangerous to war run. So I've, I've highlighted that area as well. So let's look at clash points. Now, there is a really obvious clash point right at the bottom between people here and here. And basically, right at the start of the game, people are going to rush to those destinations and then have it take long shots at each other. Now, if you can get there first and be prepared for the next guy, it's all good. You're probably going to take them out. But there is a lot of clashing going on there, especially right at the start of the game. So just be aware of that. Otherwise, you're going to run out and you're going to be someone else's first blood. You're going to be the first one to die. And it's going to be really embarrassing for you. Next there is this area up here which is a clash point as well and I would say don't come to this fight unless you have the correct weaponry. I'm talking sniper rifles, I'm talking long range weaponry. If you've got short range or even medium range weaponry you're probably going to get killed straight away. Now you can war run across here as well but again that is dangerous. Sometimes it does pay off but most of the time you're going to get shot down. So let's look at danger zones then. Now it's pretty obvious for this map, but the most dangerous place to be is probably right here in the middle. You don't want to stay around there very long at all. And you can see it's right between the bombs in demolition and exactly where B is for domination. You're probably going to die, although you could get a few kills, so it's a bit of a trade-off. 
Also, it means when you play in domination, if you can lock down B as fast as possible, then you can defend it really easily for the rest of the game. So the only sneaky route I can think of is going across here for a wall run, but then instead of carrying on, you jump again and hopefully land behind someone. It seems that not many people are expecting an attack from that angle. Once again, it's a little bit risky, but it could pay off for you. Now I can't quite think of any recurring situations for this map apart from that clash zone right at the start of the game, so do be wary of that. So let's move on to EVAC, which is probably my favourite map of this game. Um, it's just a really nice balance of open air and buildings, and for the wall running aspect, they've really done that justice as well. So this is what the map looks like normally, and if once again we take away all of the distractions, add all of the important bits, this is what it looks like. Once again, I've highlighted all of the areas where you can fall to your death. There's obviously quite a few in this map. And at the bottom there, that turquoise colour is water. And that adds quite an interesting element to the game, but we'll get into that later. And of course, we have our demolition bomb sites here and our domination sites here. So once again, you might be thinking about some clash points. Now both of these clash points are fairly long range, I'd say long to medium range clash points. There's obviously a lot of buildings where you're up close and personal, but these areas seem to be where a lot of people die at once. Now in terms of danger zones, of course those clash points are a really dangerous place to be. It's a lot of open space with a lot of spots looking down at you as well. So make sure you use the cover there. Of course, even when you do use the cover, there's a chance you're going to die anyway. Now, once again, the most dangerous place to be is where Domination Site B is. That place is a death trap. You could run in there with your entire team, and then there's just one Rambo guy on the other team with his war machine, popping stuns, throwing lethals, and he can just wipe everybody out. Now for sneaky routes, how about this? You just run straight forward at the start of a game, wall run across here, and then all of a sudden, you're in the center of the map, and that gives you the ability to counter-attack people, to flank people. It seems to work really well. However, I would recommend silenced weaponry for this. If you're doing this, unless you've talked to people first, you're probably going to be on your own. So yeah, get yourself some silenced weaponry so you could sneakily and stealthily flank people and take them out. Now if that wasn't sneaky enough for you, how about this? It's quite specific actually. Let's say you're in the final moments of playing safeguard. You've just got that final push to do, but the enemy is defending really, really well. What you need to do is run around here, wall run across here, and then you're going to end up behind everybody. And hopefully they're going to be far too distracted defending the objective to notice you gunning them down. You know what, I think we need to watch that one in action. Yeah, owned. Now finally, let's look at reoccurring situations. Now there is one quite interesting for this map actually. No one really seems to notice if you're hiding in the water down here. Now this is quite interesting because it's very close to a bomb site. It's also very close to a quite contested demolition site as well. And even though it shows you right in your face when you're switching sides, Look, there's water here. No one seems to pay attention. The only time I've ever been killed in that water is when I've drawn attention to myself. For example, I've started shooting and someone's come in the water after me. That's the only time. So let's move on to Hunted, which is a pretty cool map. I think even with the limitations that they've put on themselves of only having two story buildings, Hunted works really well. It's a really dynamic map. 
Now this is what the map looks like normally and once again if we take away all of the distractions, add all the important parts, this is what the map looks like. Again quite a few places for war running and doing some epic jumps and stuff like that. The turquoise areas are once again water. It's also probably worth mentioning for those of you that don't know that you can actually swim between these two water points here. You can also swim into the building here. So this is where the map's demolition sites are and this is where the map's domination sites are. Once again you've got that area of B that's going to be quite an area of focus. So for clash points, I think the major one, the most obvious one, is going to be here at the top. Once again, if you can get there and wait for your opponent, you're going to get that first blood most likely. So like I say, this map is quite dynamic. So this point at the top here is probably the only clash point I can guarantee. The rest are more uncertain. There's just too many routes to take. And again for danger zones, it's going to have to be where the B site is for domination once again. It's just a very open space, not many places to hide and there's quite a lot of places to look down at you that have really good cover. Just to top it off as well, there's bottomless pits of doom either side of you. So yeah, don't spend too long around there. Now admittedly this is the perfect conditions for it, it's the last few seconds of demolition but just look how many people die so quickly here. So next let's move on to sneaky routes and I have a sneaky route and a half for you guys. It's just going to be easier for me to show you the footage of this rather than trying to show you on the map. So check this out. Now of course there are a lot of variables with trying to pull off a trick like this. But if you do manage to pull it off, look at that, a triple kill. I'm well on my way to getting those kill streaks already. That's a really, really strong way to start a match. Now to be honest guys, I can't really think of any reoccurring situations for this map. There's nowhere you can hide where people just run past you. There's nowhere where there is guaranteed gunfights. So yeah, hats off to the creators of this one. It's a really, really enjoyable map. Now last and probably least actually is Stronghold. I'm not a huge fan of this map. It's okay. Uh, they, they showed us this map at E3 2015, which is a good two months before the beta came out. And it's going to be, what, four months before the full release as well. So I think it's safe to assume that this is the first map they made. And you can kind of tell. It seems like the, the wall running aspect has just been stuck on the side and not really thought about. So anyway, this is what the map looks like normally, and once again, if we take away all of the distractions, add the interesting things, this is what the map looks like. Once again, domination sites are here, and demolition sites are here. Now, as you can see, there's lots of little things, there's lots of little rocks and bits of cover uh, dotted around the map, and this seems to act like a big filter, really, a big colander, and it sends people off in crazy directions. So, in terms of clash points, similar to Hunted, there's not really definitive clash points. If I had to choose some, I'd say in the middle, as usual, is probably a good bet. Um, there's also this area at the top, now this is interesting to note because the distance between the cover and the way it's laid out means that confrontations are probably going to drag out a little bit and last longer than you're used to in Call of Duty, which let's be honest isn't very long at all. Now for danger zones, it's going to have to be here in the middle again where B is. Uh, you're probably used to this by now, but I'd say compared to the other maps, this danger zone seems to be a walk in the park really. I think they've done a good job of filtering out where the combat is, so there's no definitive spots here. Uh, I think the same goes for sneaky routes. There's so many different ways you can go that there's, there's no definitive route to go around and take people out. Um, you've just got to bear in mind 
the objectives. I think that's it for sneaky routes. Bear in mind the objectives and try and flank people. I, I'm sorry, I can't give you a specific example for that. There is, however, a recurring situation that I've noticed. Now, this is mainly when playing safeguard once again, and everyone is focused on doing the objective, pushing that walking drone thing. Everyone's concentrating on it so much that the kind of forget the rules they forget the basic rules of call of duty which is watch you back don't run in like a maniac so i think if you stand here people run past you and they're, they're so focused on the objective that you can just take them out you can you can shoot them in the back and they don't really realize i think silenced weaponry would be a great advantage here uh, you could take out quite a lot of people using that technique so guys, I really hope you got some useful information from this video. If you did, consider hitting that like button. Also, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments whether you have found any other sneaky routes or any reoccurring situations where you can get the upper hand. And if you've made it this far, I might as well recommend that you check out some of my other videos, two of which you can see in the end slate right now.